Hey, hey, wrestling fans, you're watching Figure Four Radio here on FlintTalkRadio.com. I am your host, Xavier Justice, alongside the immortal one, Mr. Father Time. We're back. I know we've been away for a while, but I tell you what. Yes, I'll tell you what, but what, what, what we got to tell you today is just going to blow your socks off, and I hope you got your, I hope you got your underwear on tight, too. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been an exciting uh, couple of months here at Pure Pro Wrestling. We had our, our season debut at the Masonic Temple uh, just under two weeks ago. Uh, that was, of course, in Flint, Michigan. And what a huge night that was. Oh, my goodness, I tell you what, the place was packed. Everybody was nervous. We didn't know what was going to happen. We had the MMA fighters around there. We had the wrestling fans there. Pandemonium, chaos, it was, it was one. all in all, it was a great night, it was a great yes, time. It was. A lot of folks showed up, in fact, we had nearly 300 people show up for the Masonic Temple show, uh, and kudos to all the uh, to all the uh, wrestlers and all the staff members that worked hard that night to make that event happen. It was nothing short of epic, and we're excited. In today's show, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit of the past, we're going to run down the Masonic Temple, all the matches, we're going to talk down, break, break down the matches here, uh, and also we're going to talk about the future. Um, April we're kind of laying low because we're getting ready. March and April, we're kind of getting ready, lying dormant, mm -hmm. filling out our schedule. Why? Because May is coming up. We're going to have three huge events in May. That's right, three huge events in May, including the Elite Eight. Elite and folks, eight. you know when we start talking the Elite Eight, we're going to start talking about Retro Slam. Five, the fifth anniversary, the big one, the bad one, the one that everyone is looking forward to the most, yes. Retro Slam. So that all that's going to be coming up. So let's first talk about the Masonic Temple. First of all, Wait, Father Time. First, first of all, what? first of all, as you can see, he's still here. I'm still here. I'm still he here. He made it through. I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm, the young man, he did well. You yeah. know, everybody was worried. Matter more, of fact, more than well. Um, yeah, he did. He did. Fan, I tell you, he held his own with against that three hundred pound beast. Three hundred twenty five pounds. Three hundred twenty five. Six five. Yes. Three hundred twenty five pounds. Undefeated MMA fighter. Uh, yeah, it was. It was just a, an incredible night. I gotta say, you know, going into the Masonic Temple. Uh, you know, a battle of the battle on the bricks. It, it was uh, just a big fight atmosphere. It was like a pay per view. Uh, you know, the crowd was just stacked. The rafters. We ran out of chairs. We yeah, ran yeah. out of, of uh, food in the ran, concessions. Ran, we, we like ran out of commissions. Time. That's it. Yeah, it was it was it was ridiculous. So. Uh, it was just a big fight atmosphere, and uh, I'll tell you, before we talk about the main event, let's let's uh, first talk about the first match. Do you remember what the first match was? That was... That was well, right. it was the debut of two new wrestlers. That was, of course, uh, Canadian... Canadian's own Ethan Page yeah. and Detroit's Austin Mannix. Now, these are two young men that are incredible athletes, gifted professional wrestlers. Ethan Page, all the way from Canada... Uh, we got fortunate. There was an event cancellation uh, that particular weekend that a lot of big talent was on up in northern Michigan. And that event canceled, and a few uh, a few uh, last-minute uh, talent was signed for for the event. They, begged, this, this they was huge. begged to come to TPW. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. But... <laughs> But I'll tell you what, it was an amazing event, and Ethan Page was uh, was an incredible pickup for that event. Um, and we, we actually just found out that a week after our event, he had a WWE tryout. So that just lets you know the caliber of talent that Ethan Page is, and of course the caliber of talent we bring you each and every event on Pure Pro Wrestling. So he took on Austin Mannix, who has been turning some heads here in Michigan. He's been traveling all around Michigan and Ohio and Indiana. I mm -hmm. believe he's been in Wisconsin and Iowa. He's won multiple championships for several different companies and uh, we finally gave him a shot uh, you know, to come out here in pure pro wrestling. And he held his own against uh, Paige. He took him to the limit, but Paige picked up a victory. I think experience was a big factor yeah. in that. And like I said, this guy's big time. You know, he had a WWE tryout. But Austin Mannix, uh, we do know he's going to be back in May. And I look for big things out of this young man. So did you hear how he did at the tryout? Uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. He, he just kind of dropped me one line on Facebook, said the trial went well. Um, <laughs> I don't know. The man's a little obsessed with The Rock. He was bummed out because he didn't get to meet the guy. Oh, yeah. um, but, uh, you know, a tremendous experience for him. Um, you know, an exciting time to be mm -hmm. in, in a WWE locker room when you got The Rock and Cena coming up and, you know, Triple H and Brock Lesnar and all these big, huge matches, The Undertaker and CM Punk. So WrestleMania time is always really exciting. Yeah, yeah, and we're yeah. excited, too, because this is when our season really starts to kick off is, is at the end of winter, early spring. And, uh, you know, we're just excited because of the spring is just going to be huge, especially oh, with that trifecta so many, in oh, May. Oh, yes, we got so many things going on mm -hmm. between now and especially in April. We're not going to say too much about that, but we, we will be hearing about it, though. 
Well, we've seen some, uh, uh, an old face that returned, uh, a student Wait a from... Is that just a dip? They know about my face. Not, not, not your old, your, not your old face. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. Well, there was a, a student I trained, uh, oh, let's say about four years ago, and uh, he since he left uh, the Justice League, uh, he has been so busy. I, I can't even get him to come out to a pure oh, pro wrestling yeah. event. Mm-hmm. He's booked somewhere just about every weekend. He's traveling a lot, doing very well yeah. for himself. He had some Ring of Honor tryouts. And uh, the Mad Dragon, the Mad Dragon Mad returned Dragon. and returned in a yes, big way. There was a huge Survivor Series match uh, that happened, um, you know, at the uh, Battle on the Bricks. And it saw uh, the Senator Bill Don John, mm-hmm. the return of the crippler K- Klitschkoff. Yeah. He the was Russian there. was yeah. back yes. and angry and looking good, man. He eliminated somebody right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, Klitschkoff was in it. See, Gary the Freak was in it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, who else? Who was the other guy? I don't remember. Oh, Mad Dragon, the guy I was just talking about. Right. So that was a, a hell of a team that was put together, and they took on two newcomers, um, I believe uh, two two young men that were trained uh, at Eric Freedom's camp up north uh, in, in the Cadillac area of Michigan, and uh, uh, Harlem Race, and, uh, uh, well, the Evans boys was in it. Yeah. They, and, they, they, uh, they of course, well. Hades was in it. Yep, and, you know, had a, we had a lot of, lot of fans complimented that match. They said it was one of the better matches they saw that night. Yeah, very exciting match. Yeah, a lot of really action, a lot of big eliminations. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, out of the blue, it was Ace Evans who survived it all. Him and the Mad Dragon were the last two. Uh, he had a beautiful counter, hit that big boot, uh, revved up the engine, and just nailed it right across the face. And I'll tell you, that was one hell of a match. I, I could, I, I was in the locker room, you know, changing, and I could just hear the crowd just rah, erupting for this match. You see how good Ace Evans is looking now? Looking good. He's got Ooh, himself uh, slim and trim. He's starting to... Uh, to Pack on the muscle and the tone. I'll tell you what, this guy is uh, is really going to yeah, be uh, like onto something. some some big things here in 2013. Yeah, I can feel something other guy's some fire up under his butt. But I tell you what, he is. I mean, he's out there training. He's kicking butt in the ring. Well, I, I think what's happened is something. is Mo Evans, his brother, is eating all the food is that that, that Ace used to eat. I think that's what it is. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. You know, I asked him where did 25 pounds of fat go, and he just kind of looked the other way. So maybe yeah, he, he looked towards Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that, but anyway, <laughs> there it is. Oops, there it is. Mo, hopefully, Mo gets a bigger bike this spring. Mo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but second match was, uh, or, I'm sorry, that was only the uh, Survivor Series match. But we move on to uh, two big returns we haven't seen in a PPW ring in a while. Uh, and we talked about this for several weeks. Grizzly House Jones yes. recently renewed his contract. Mm-hmm. And he came back and back in a big way. Uh, you want to talk about being a brave guy. You know, uh, if you watch the show uh, leading up to the Battle of the Bricks, of course, you know about the Dingo Brown incident here in the studio. Yeah. Some things got broke. Some uh, staff members got assaulted. Uh, tra- <laughs> uh, things were replaced, paid for, and, and charges were dropped. Yeah, but yeah, uh, needless yeah. to say, uh, there was a lot of MMA uh, fans and fighters that were in attendance at the temple. Things were a little tense, but uh, uh, yeah, there was, it was real tense. It wasn't little. Intense and intense. intense. Yes, it was. So Grizzly House Jones had an open challenge to any MMA fighter. He had him actually signing up, volunteering to come in and try to break the bear hug. Now, of course, if you follow Pure Pro Wrestling, you know Grizzly House Jones is a retired, undefeated professional bear wrestler. And uh, once uh, wrestles bears, yes. I mean, that's. You know, look it up. It's Google that crap. It's crazy. So uh, he wrestled bears. He never lost. And he retired from that, said there wasn't enough competition, joined the pro wrestling ranks, you know, better paychecks and uh, less bears. So <laughs> this guy's been, you know, breaking backs with this bear hug. It's never been broke. This guy's been in the company for four years yeah, now, and nice. his bear hug has never been broke. He's a former Elite Eight winner. He's mm-hmm. a former franchise yeah. champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he was champion. a television champion, mm-hmm. and he actually won the tag team titles only to trade them for the television championship. Mm-hmm. Pretty impressive. Yes. Right. I'll well, he nice. returned. He yeah. challenged an MMA fighter. You should have seen the guy that got in the ring. Did you see him? I didn't see that one. He was, uh, you know, not real tall. He was about six foot, you know, average height. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, I swear I he, was, screams. he was probably about 300 pounds. Yeah, I heard the screams. And he moans. took his shirt off, and this guy, I mean, he looked like a bodybuilder. All right. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, this guy flew in all the way from Florida. Florida. Just because he heard about this fight, he saw the hype on the internet. He didn't like the trash that I was talking. Yeah. You know what are you gonna do? But he bodyguards for bodyguards for Xavier that night. Yeah, security was was on top. Alex, you did a good job. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so this guy gets in the ring, and I'm thinking to myself, there is no way in hell that Grizzly's gonna be able to hold this guy. 
I'll tell you what, not only did he hold him, he picked this guy up over his head, and he just squeezed the uh, life out of him. That guy tapped out in under two minutes. You know, i tell you something. I've been in that uh, bear hug before. I think I've been in it a couple of times. And, you know, I – Afterwards, though, you know, that's the first time my back felt that good in over 100 years. I gave you a nice little adjustment yes. there. I'll tell you, I've been on the wrong end of those adjustments. Those I took a bear hug. Let me tell you a funny story. This was before you were with the company. Okay. Oh, this was maybe four or five years ago, probably four years ago. We were at the uh, Bologna Festival. Yes, this exists in Yale, Michigan. I've been to the Bologna Festival. The Bologna Festival in Bologna Yale, on Michigan. A stick. Bologna, it's quite amazing, actually. Uh, it's a very fun festival. So, um, they, they allowed us a few minutes to talk in the main stage area, which is literally <laughs> downtown, okay? This was uh, downtown. Uh, the whole city's closed down. So, this is, you know, the, the post office. Every, I mean, this is Main Street, okay? So, there's a stage set up. They have the spin doctors there. You know, the 90s hit, hit one hit wonder band. And, and anyway, so, you know, the whole, fe- the whole town's there. There's thousands of people yes. there. Yeah. So, yeah. they should have known better than to hand me a mic and tell me I got 30 seconds. No, no. We took about 15 minutes, but uh, right. in the end, uh, the Grizzly House Jones challenged the Baloney King. <laughs> yes, there's a Baloney I, Queen and King. He yeah. challenged the Baloney King to a bear hug challenge. The Baloney King tapped. Uh, Grizzly got a little hungry, I guess, and squeezed the life out of him and wouldn't let him go. So I had to try to jump in. Next thing you know, I'm in the bear hug. So I'm in the middle of a thousand people in the Baloney Festival yeah. in you know a ridiculous shirt and you know it's the summer i'm i'm relaxed i'm having fun i'm in sandals and i'm getting bear hugged there's a picture of, on my facebook of it. it's hysterical uh so I, i've been in this thing a few times and, and, and in a public embarrassing way as well well yeah i, I, I was at the blowney festival a, a couple of years but i didn't, i heard about that the, the town was still talking about it and yes well the blowney uh, king was never the same after no he that. wasn't he was mad. and yeah. the queen well I think she moved on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So Grizzly House Jones comes think, back, yeah, I think squeezes tried. the life out of this MMA fighter. Next thing you know, this mysterious music hits, and some crazy masked man walks out. I'm talking about the mysterious Movado all the way from Planet Detroit. This guy is over 300 pounds. I mean, his, his getup is awesome, his mask and everything, unbelievable. And he went out there, and you should have heard that crowd for him. It was unreal. And not only did he take Grizzly House Jones to the limit, he was able, uh, he, he got stuck in the bear hug. That's hard mm-hmm. to avoid. But he was able to get to the ropes, got a rope break. Next thing you know, Grizzly went for the bear hug again. Movado nails what he calls the Detroit DDT, and, uh, and, and he pinned Grizzly. When's the last time you've seen Grizzly House Jones pinned in a PPW ring? It's been, I can't, I really, I really, you know, I, I, it's been a while. Well, thank God we had a lot of security because you'll remember the last time Grizzly lost was at the Masonic, Masonic Temple, Temple at Retro Slam. He, he lost his championship the, and he everything. tore the building yes, down. He did. Well, he tried to do that. He went after Bud Slaughter and tried to break his guitar. It was a mess, but security stopped him, and they got him out of the building. You know, Bud Slaughter has a tendency to get kind of messed up with him. Yeah, he I don't know what it is. Maybe Bud Slaughter shouldn't come around these pro wrestlers so often because they just they just want to hurt the guy. I don't get it. He's such a nice dude. He, he really is. I mean, but I guess it's just he has that. They played at Battle of the Bricks. That, that was a treat. We got to play some new songs. We got to hear some cool things. I, I believe they shot a music video. Uh, that was a pretty awesome night. So Movado and Grizzly House Jones, I, I really don't see the end of that. Yeah. You know, Grizzly's not going to take that loss lightly. Uh, it took security to get him out of the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, you know. that was quite a, that, that was really quite an experience. You know, I was, you know, being you know being back in the locker room a lot of times, I miss out on a lot of things. But I hear a whole lot what's <laughs> going on out there. I really you hear do. a little too much. Uh, yes, I was just unreal sometimes. Well, let's talk about another big match. How about that tag team match between uh, Blue Steel? And the uh, and the mat and the marvelous mics. The marvelous mics. I tell you, that is one fantastic tag team, and uh, we're going to be losing one, Pierre. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe if he if he if he makes it out alive. I'll tell you what. This was uh, an unbelievable match. Blue Steel and the mics have been feuding here for the past several months. Uh, they uh, first wrestled each other all the way out in center line, and had an amazing match. Blue Steel ended up taking that victory. Well, this time around, the, the mics got even. They had an amazing win, but after the match, Blue Steel jumped the mics and hit Mikey Miller with their uh, finisher. They called a fashion statement, but I'll tell you what, if you haven't seen this move yet, you'll see it on the television show that's going to debut this spring. 
uh, it, it, it's disgusting, and quite frankly, it should be outlawed because, I mean, you can break a man's neck with this move. There's, there's nothing wrestling about it. This is to punish somebody. And uh, they hit Miller with this after the bell, and, uh, you know, Miller had to be carried out. Well, come to find out, Miller, uh, he's got uh, only a couple months left here in PPW yeah, yes, for a while. Does, yeah, yeah. Uh, we found out that Miller is going to be uh, serving his country in the Air Force. Yes, he is. Uh, look, be look overhead, everyone, to see a plane wave. He's going to be taken off here in a few months, and that's if he can pass the, you know, the physical. You know. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> a little insider information, dazzling down. You hear a lot in the, in the, uh, in the locker rooms and before the show. You know, dazzling Dominic was just being loud and talking and talking. You know what he was talking about? I don't have no he said, about. I'm going to break Mikey Miller's neck. He's not going to make it to the Air Force. Ooh. I mean, those are big words. You, you know, I you know, I remember when uh, Mikey first came along, and uh, 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 they saw him. You know, they both of them, both of those guys are fashion statements. This blue steel, you know, both a model and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think what it was, you know, Mike Mike Miller, he's a nice looking young man, and he got I a think, lot of attention from I, the ladies. Yeah, he, he really did. And I think from well, that so point on. From, yeah, both of them. I think from that point on is when the envious came with Blue yeah. Steel. It's, it's, it's clearly about jealousy. Blue Steel will never admit to that. But, uh, you know, they're, they're losing some of their fan base, the, yeah, the young yeah. ladies. When they go to the club, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the mics are already there, and they're in a better section. Yep, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, there's been a little bit of rivalry there, and these are the new young bucks, so to speak, and Blue Steel, uh, you know, could be old news. Who knows? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I know. Big Dazzling Blue. Dominic's taking exception to this. I, I've, and I've heard a uh, big And Dazzling big, Dominic big. Is, is towards, let's face it, you know, he's, He's almost in his uh, well. He's almost in his mid thirties now. So I mean, he's his, or, I'm sorry, early thirties. So, but everyone knows when you know hit your thirties, your modeling career is pretty much over. Yeah, you know, you know the big deal's got a good. You know, yeah, he's, yeah. he's only 21, 22 years old. So he's got a long, a long, uh, a long career left in, as far as the modeling career. But you know, dazzling Dominic's towards the end of it. And I think he sees these younger guys and uh, and maybe a little jealousy and mm. uh, you know for making that transition into wh whatever he's going to do next. You know, you know I'm, I'm wondering now. You know, kind of. Put a little seed in my mind. Do you think that maybe uh, Dominique might start looking at the big deal kind of strange here? You know, I, I don't think so. He's, you know, uh, the big deal is like an unofficial son to him, a son friend, he calls him. <laughs> uh, son friend? Yes, yeah, a son friend, yes. It, it, interesting concept. But, you mm. know, let's face it, the big deal broke into the business when he was 17 years old. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Uh, there's a young rookie, and he initially teamed up with somebody he trained with, and, you know, he got kicked around the indie scene. He wasn't winning matches. He wasn't, you know, he didn't have any weight on him. Uh, you know, he had some talent. He had some skill, but he just, you know, he had a rough go at it. And uh, here, you know, Dazzling Dominic saw gold in this young man, and uh, he took him under his wing, and he, and he taught him the ways of, of uh, you know, of, of his modeling and his pro wrestling style. And next thing you know, there's an amazing tag team for him. And uh, so I, I think you're right. I think that, uh, uh, you know, there's uh, there, there's I, I don't think there's going to be any issues down the road with that. I just know that Dazzling Dominic is not liking these young cats taking over his territory. And, and he tried, he literally tried to take out Miller at that last show. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, see, I didn't know what happened out there, but I did see I did see them bring Mikey back into the back. Well, room we'll, we'll get back into that because there's going to be more into that in the May. So. Also, Father Time, you wrestled somebody that knew that debuted in Pure Pro Wrestling. Yes, a man I that came from Vegas. Yes, I should. By the name of Vincent Crawley. And, and he had a young lady with him, uh, a, a Miss Sophia Black. Yeah, I And think. Uh, she was gorgeous, but she looked like uh, maybe she was a bit maybe loose. psychotic. Loose psychotic? and psychotic. I, you know, I'm psychotic, not sure. I would say. I don't know about I'm, loose. I'm not sure where he picked her up at, but uh, I think that... Uh, I'm not too sure and what was going on. That outfit wasn't cheap. cheap, so she's you know she's not some cheap run in the middle hussy. I mean, the, well, I uh, this young lady though, I mean, she was just in, enthralled with this guy. But tell tell me about this opponent. What was it like being in the ring with this guy? It was pretty different. Mouthy guy, real mouthy, real mouthy, real mouthy. That's the first thing that came out talked about. Yeah, normally talk. guys know better around here to talk crap to you because they end up uh, eat, eating their words. Well, but, yeah, uh, and so what we got into the match. You know, he tried to show off. He's a bodybuilder. You know, he's trying to show off his physique, show off his strength. But you know, time takes a toll on everybody. Well, they, if you want, John, you can start playing this match. We, we got this match here. Uh, uh, John from Flint Talk Radio showed up and uh, set up a little camera here as best as he could. You know, we had a television crew there that day, so we couldn't really quite get Flint Talk into the best view. But we got a kind of a, a fan's eye view, um, so to speak, to uh, as to uh, this match. So we're going to... <laughs> Turn it down so we can talk over it, man. 
Can we talk over it? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Turn it on so we can talk over it. Sorry about that. We're trying to get it so we can do a little voice over here. Kind of talk about this match. So you can see him coming out here. He's got his young lady with him. This is uh, uh, Vincent Crawley. He made his PPW debut at Battle at the Bricks. Uh, all the way from Las Vegas, and uh, we don't know a lot about him and, uh, and his little lady friend there, Sophia Black, but I tell you, they don't give me a good vibe. Yeah, I, you know, I tell you, dude, and, you know, when I've, I've seen him in the locker room a couple of times, I've seen him train, he kind of stays to himself, but it's just that mouth on him, everything. I would have never expected that, he's very quiet. Uh, you know, something, I guess when the lights come on, it's like the roaches, they run, I guess the lights come on, he opens his mouth. Well, I do know he was complaining. He was upset that uh, he was in, a, in the ring with a quote-unquote senior citizen. He felt like he should have more of a caliber of talent. But uh, he soon found out. You know, he, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. This was his first time in pure pro wrestling. So he didn't know he was getting in the ring with the local legend, Mr. Father Time. You, you know, uh, uh, he really... You're he, no ordinary old man, Mr. Yeah, Time. People don't realize that a lot of times. You know, I always tell them, if you can keep up with the time... <laughs> then you then you then you're doing John, something. John, let's there. fast forward a little bit and get into some of the action here, so these folks aren't bored to death with entrances. You know, you may have to go kind of forward because you know most of it was talked Georgia. a lot, huh? You're yes, he, no. I just and you know that really bothers me when you when a guy gets in the ring. I want to get in there and take care of business. You know, you can run your mouth all you want to, but when you get in there and you stand toe to toe with me, that's what I want. I don't I don't need all this jaw jacking. I really don't. right, right. And it's not to say that you can't you know jaw jack with the best of them, but. Uh, you know, see, this is all about competition here in pure pro wrestling. It's about finding out who's the best man. You know, and the winner takes the bigger purse. We all know that. So, you know, this is about, uh, you know, guys trying to make a living, guys, uh, you know, that love the industry, that have pride in what they're doing. You know, these are competitors. These aren't, uh, you know, your run-of-the-mill professional wrestlers out here. Uh, you know, these are top-notch athletes. There's high stakes here at Pure Pro Wrestling. The Michigan State Championship is always in, in the minds and in the eyes of these guys. They want to be on top. And I know Father Time, you know, uh, you didn't get into the industry when you were, uh, you know, 20 years old. You got into the game late. So I know that time is, is, is on your shoulders. So you look at a guy like this who's running his mouth, you want to make quick work of him because you're looking to the next big step, That's which is exactly. that Michigan State title. And, you know, and I don't want, I don't want somebody coming in like him coming in and thinking that he can take advantage of me just because of the way he, with the way he sees. He talked about everything. He talked about my vision. He talked about the strokes. He talked about all of it. But the thing he had to remember, Remember, trying to get under your skin is what yeah, he tried to do. but you know, he's got to remember. Well, apparently he looked you up a little bit. If you knew all that. Well, he yeah. must have read some of the newspaper articles. I believe he must that have he seen did. some I news mean, stories, you know. Uh, that was the comments he made. But, you know, like I keep trying to tell him, I overcame that. So it, you don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> well, see, that, that's a first. I see you push you back a little bit. How, was, was he pretty strong? Yeah, he yeah. was trying to show off a little bit. But just watch and see what happens when uh, it comes back around, though. Yeah, I mean, well, that's something that doesn't happen. I've been in the ring with you. I've tried to do the same damn thing, and uh, the most I can get is a stalemate out of you, and that's if I get your, your cardio up. <laughs> hey, you know, you're this young boy, as I just said, hey, I let him have his fun, let him have it. You know, I like to lure you into a false sense of security. <laughs> uh, well, fair enough. That, that's actually sound strategy. But, uh, oh, I see. You threw him right back there. And that, that turnbuckle, that doesn't feel good. A lot of people think those pads help, but I'll tell you what. I put them ropes on or these hooks. They're made of steel and they're thick, okay? I that think, pad is what's over the hook. I so think when the, you hit that bad boy, it, it hurts like hell. I think the pad is there to keep us from hurting the hooks. <laughs> right? That probably about sounds it up. Sums it up. Yeah, he did. He, he had a few good moves in there, but you know, I tell you what, I, I because of the fans, you know, and, that, and I, that's what I like about the fans. They really get behind you in there, and a lot of times uh, that that's well, important. Let's get into the action a little bit more, John. Why don't you fast forward and see what this guy's got? I know at one point he uh, he used Miss Sophia Black, and he kind yeah, of, the, oh, the, right, there you are. That's a good point. Walk on the top rope. Look at that. How many blind men you know can do this? Bam! Old school. I'm talking about old, old school there from Father Time. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh. Super old school, like yeah, prehistoric old school. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen this match. It's, uh, huh. Let's just see what it looks like on the, on the TV footage. Woo. Oh, does it really? Yeah, well, we've got an appointment later on with uh, with One Shot Productions here out of Grand Blank. 
and uh, we're going to be editing the footage, uh, putting together some more episodes of the of the PPW Power Half Hour, which is going to hopefully be debuting WrestleMania April, weekend. Every, yeah. Well, wait, listen, we're I'm just going to tell you bluntly, we're we're doing our best to get it ready in time for WrestleMania weekend's debut. Uh, we're currently working on a 12 episode season, and uh, you know this is possibly one of the matches you could see on that 12 episode season. And the premise, folks, of it is this: we're going to pick out the best of the best ep uh, uh, matches. You know, we we do over uh, 50 live events a year. We've got a lot to choose from, so we're only going to select the best matches from the from the year, and we're going to put these on for you. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of great matches to choose from, and uh, we we make sure we carefully go through the footage. The editing process is very intricate, and we don't we don't want to just put out garbage. We don't you know we don't want to put out just anything out there. We want fans to see something that they're never going to forget. We want quality in our production value, and uh, you know we're we're doing our best here. We're hoping to be able to shoot the show off. WrestleMania weekend on Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon. We're going to be sitting down with CW Network next week to try to line up the schedule. And uh, we're just praying that we can get this post-production together and, uh, and get it ready to go because I'll tell you what, we're very proud of what we've shot. We're very proud of the initial pilot and uh, the, the, the couple episodes we're working on uh, as we speak. So it literally might be a, a week by week situation, but we come hell or high water, we're going to get the show on. And I know you've been working pretty hard at it. I've seen a, I've seen one of the pilots, and I tell you what, uh, that was a or, yeah pre pilot a, a basically pre, yeah. a pre pilot. That what it is yeah. a pre pilot, and I tell you what, it looked really good. I'm really excited about it, I, I, and I'm telling you, it, it this is going to be something that you're going to. There's the top three. I think we're going to be the top four across the United States pretty soon. Everybody's well, going to know the name of It's going to take a lot of hard work. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're, I mean, that's all local, we're, ta we're starting with local Michigan television. We're going to be basically covering the Michigan uh, I-75 corridor. All and, Bay City. Uh, all Bay City, Saginaw, Midland, Flint. Mm -hmm. I um, mean, you know, we've got a, a pretty expansive coverage area. It's going to cover a half a million folks. It won't be statewide yet. Uh, but the nice thing is we're going to expand our website. And uh, we're going to allow these uh, the t television show to be available on the website. So uh, you know, once it's aired, uh, you'll be able to go to the website and check it out. We're going to put exclusive bonus matches up, um, and we're also going to start offering uh, a pay per click. Mm -hmm. So if there's a particular wrestler you're really following, uh, you know, or maybe you want to watch the whole show, you know, you can uh, you know you can pay per click for a, a match or as cheap as ninety nine cents a click. So. Um, you know, and we got a lot. Cents. Yeah, we got a lot of great, uh, a lot of great things coming up here. It's like the budget menu at Burger King. Well, you know, we mm -hmm. try to make it. We try to make it uh, and you get affordable a, you, and, you get a lot and, more and accessible for fans. And you know, I believe the internet and the eye pay per view and the pay per click is really the wave of the future, and it makes us accessible to an international market. And uh, you know, while we're trying to you know launch television locally and hopefully at some point nationally, you know, we're really going to focus on that on that internet marketing as well. And because it's it's vital to to get this in, we we don't just want to you know share this with with local Flint residents. And we we do love you, but we want to bring this all over the world. And we've got some fans from around the world. We I just got a DVD order from the United Kingdom. Know. Uh, you know, we've got uh, people from South Africa that mm -hmm. follow us. We've got people in India that follow us. So uh, Pure Pro Wrestling uh, does have some fans internationally. A lot has to do with this show here on flinttalkradio.com and a lot has to do with uh, you know just the internet marketing in general so we're really going to look to make ourselves more available uh, here in the next couple of years and it's all starting this year uh, with getting this television out and uh, uh, you know we're excited about it CW you, Network's a big deal you know I've heard you know not only uh, the fans but I've heard there's a couple of people that's trying to get over here to train absolutely we've got uh, a young man I've been I've been talking to for oh, almost a year now from India is trying to get over here and he's had all kinds of uh, hiccups with uh, customs. Um, he doesn't speak English too well, so it's hard to really, you know, um, give him the proper information. And I got another gentleman from uh, Africa right now uh, that is currently saving up money to come over, and uh, that's, you know, that's incredible to come in and take that kind of leap uh, to get in the squared circle to do uh, to live to live a dream. So that's, uh, you know, we're hoping this pans out for him, and that just lets you know we're we're getting out there, and uh, real soon we'll we'll be we'll be even closer than ever. <laughs> Well, I was just looking here. Why don't you just fast forward that so I can make sure that you can see what happens to him towards the end there. Yeah, that's, uh... yeah you know, this is just a little preview. This is, you know, this isn't anywhere near what the television program is going to be, but we just wanted to show you a little bit of the action, give you a little taste, a glimpse at uh, Vincent Crawley, which is another wrestler that's debuted. And uh, while we're still watching this, we can talk about some of the other matches that happened. Of course, there was Chris Corvus mm -hmm. and Sebastian Rose. What a huge Michigan State Championship match that was. Unbelievable matchup. I'll tell you what. 
uh, you know, the, the crowd didn't know what to expect, and there were several times where I thought Corbis was going to walk away. Mm-hmm. But once again, Sebastian Rose retains the championship. Yes. He is a he he I think a lot of people don't realize just the caliber of Sebastian Rhodes. And when they get into the ring with him, it's a no whole new experience. I've had the opportunity to be in the ring. I know you've had it several yeah, times. Yeah, I and, just uh, lost a match to him uh, yeah, in the fall. He's uh, he he's he's good. He, he's good. He might be mouthy, a little butthole, but I tell you what. <laughs> he's got top notch training. He, uh, Dory Funk yes, Jr. Dory trained Funk him Jr. at the Funkin Conservatory. Yes, so, uh, uh, he's a 10-year vet, and I'll tell mm-hmm. you what, Sebastian Rose. Did you see the oh, – we forgot about it, The new Michigan State Championship, did you see that? I didn't get a ball? chance to oh. see it, but I heard about it. I it's, saw it flashing it's huge. out there. It's bigger than your head. Oh, jeez. Which is pretty big. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's silver. It's gorgeous. Uh, you know, and, and I got to say, it makes me drool. And it makes me very upset that I don't have it. So – I'm going to be training extra hard today, uh, thinking tell, about that belt. I, tell you, I want I, that belt. After that match that you had with Dingo, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Michigan State Championship is not too far out of your reach. Well, let's talk about the match with Dingo. This is the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to recap yeah. this huge match. We plugged it for weeks. Uh, there was uh, oh. a lot of unfortunate incidents that really made, uh, what was it, first the spirit of competition turn into... Uh, personal. Per- very personal, uh, and in some respects... Uh, you know, things got out of hand. But I'll tell you what, it all came to a head. Yeah, I had the opportunity to referee the match as a special referee that night. And uh, Thank God, because, uh, we were, you know, yeah. we were worried that some MMA, MMA fans might try to finish the fight, you know, or something like that. But uh, security kept him in check, and I'll tell you, you were in the ring. You saw what happened. It was unreal. It was, that was one brutal match. A couple of Superman punches were thrown. But I tell you something, I, w- I was in the match as a referee, as a neutral person dingo charged xavier xavier stepped aside and as dingo came back i couldn't believe my eyes what i saw this man this man here got up under this 325 pound beast picked him up for one of the most beautiful suplexes i've ever seen dropped him right out of his dome just my- like i said I was I I was a fan for two seconds. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what you know. I I've never been hit as hard in my life. You know the Dingo. I mean the man. You know strong is not the word. Uh, the guy. You know he rung my bell flat out. Um, you know right off the bat he came at me with a, an axe kick to the head and I thank God I got out of the way. And my whole strategy was this. I, I knew I knew going into the match that Dingo. Uh, you know, was going to be out of his element. He's going to be thinking charge, 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 all bull and no strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, all go, no strategy, just seeing red. Uh, You know, MMA, it's all about taking the the adrenaline and working with it and using that to to punish your guy. But you've got to use a little tact and coy because in pro wrestling, you've got the ropes to work with and do account for. Um, You know, you've got people that can get out to the floor and break the count up and bring him in if they're taking a beating and stuff like that. So there's a lot of strategy. The pro wrestling is a thinking man sport, and it's very difficult to pin a man for three seconds. I don't, I, I, you know, uh, anyone can knock a man out. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Anyone can knock a man out, but pinning a guy for three seconds or making him tap out is, is incredibly difficult. So my whole strategy was to frustrate him and to tire him out, to take him out of his element, which I did. And he came at me, and, and thank God I got out of the way of that axe kick, and I stayed to the ropes, and I paid for it. Uh, I took a few open shots. Yeah. By the time, couldn't couldn't get to, 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 to him to stop the closed fists right away. I took a few uh, yeah, shots early on. I took a kick that almost buckled my leg. And uh, but what I did is, uh, you know, when he bat, when when the rope break happened and and he got backed off, I shot in at the legs. I, I figure if I can get him down, if I can get him to the mat, I'll be fine. Uh, you know, I'm strong in the mat as anyone, and uh, uh, you know, I, I figured I'd have him there. I have him tired out. I have him pissed off, out of his element, shaken, and um, you know, he's he's not used to being on his back. So. Uh, you know, I tried to get him down a few times, and like I said, this guy is so damn strong. Uh, he literally just threw me back. I mean, threw me back, and then he come at me with these kicks and punches. So I just stayed in the ropes, and he got tired and he got frustrated. Got really frustrated. You know, it, I couldn't believe the power of this man when he was on top of him, pounding him. I was grabbing his arm. Yeah. And he was pulling me down as he was yeah, pounding. Yeah, it was it was brutal. It was rough. I mean, I was on the other end of those hammer fists. So, but anyway, so I, I decided, you know, when I had him frustrated. I decided to, to really, really just push him over the edge, and I hopped out of the ring. I set him up. I, you know, this was kind of a plan that I had ahead of time. 
Um, I set him up. I set out of the ring. I even did the old Ric Flair strut just to piss him off. Oh, yes, I thought maybe a couple fans might might take a swing at me, but uh, security kept them back. Uh, and I knew he would come get me, so he grabbed me. Um, I, did, <laughs> I didn't expect to get yanked up by my hair. I expect he'd grab me and pull me up, but, man, he literally pulled me up one arm by the hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I had him where I wanted him. I hooked him up, and I, uh, I dropped him with uh, you know a stunner right on the ropes. And uh, that took his throat, which took his wind, and he was already winded and pissed off from yelling. I went right up to that top rope. I nailed the cross body. Beautiful cross body. And uh, I almost had him right there. Uh, I got a two count out of that. People were shocked. I mean, I, 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 I think what kind of threw me off for the next moment was the way the crowd went quiet. Uh, no one expected him to drop that fast. So I got a little too cocky. I thought he was, a little, I thought he was more hurt than what he was. And I hit a few kicks, and I thought, you know, okay, I got him where I want him. I come off those ropes. And he hit a kick uh, to my head, and I, I mean, I feel like I had an out-of-body experience. You know what I mean? I was, like, looking down at myself on that mat. You he know, hit I, me I, so freaking hard. How, I, how, I, you gave, know? I gave you a count, and I was thinking, this, you're not getting up. No. I didn't think it was. And he did his little, he did his uh, grave digger. Yeah, I he, saw the footage. He, he was taunting. He was covering, you, so, covering you, know. you, and I'm saying, this is out. But uh, I don't remember kicking out at that point. I really don't. Uh, well, actually, what happened was uh, he came down to wrestle you again. <laughs> I watched the footage. I mean, I, I you know, I, I remember, I, I don't remember kicking out, but, no, you, uh, you know, he, yeah. he, I know at that point, he, you know, he just dominated me. He had me on the ground. He was, he was pummeling me. Father Time did everything he could to stop that, because obviously in a pro wrestling match, that's not legal. And finally, uh, I do remember when I kind of snapped out of it uh, was when a clothesline hit me in the corner. You know, Father Time said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disqualify you. Yeah. I could hear his mm-hmm. voice. You know, I'm going to disqualify you. You're going to have to wrestle the man. So he pushed Father Time to the side. And, uh, you know, and I got to give it to you for not disqualifying him because you wouldn't have made it out of the building. But we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but uh, so, so he come charging at me, hit me with the clothesline. He chopped me. I mean, I've never been chopped like that in my life. <laughs> Uh, he, and then I, you know, I was down in the corner. He was giving me these kicks, and you couldn't keep him back. You know, how could you? The guy's as strong as a bull. And, you know, so I'm, I'm wide open, just taking kicks to the face, taking kicks to the chest, the stomach. Um, you know, you can just hear the slap, yeah, uh, you know, across, across the... I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, I was surprised a man that big could throw a kick so fast. Yeah. He was no telegraphing or whatever. I mean, no. you, he, I mean, he almost had you, man. He almost yeah. took your head off. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yes, you're absolutely right. So he was tagging me and tagging me, and, uh, and then he had me, and he was giving me the big, big shoulder thrusts. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've, I've taken a choke slam before. <laughs> I've wrestled a man seven foot and taken a double choke slam. Well, you know, this choke slam, he had him up. I, I thought I saw the space station <laughs> <laughs> go by. It was, I, I could not believe how high. I don't think he's been that high when he was, in the, when he was out in the club. <laughs> <laughs> Hi-o. But I tell you what, I, 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 was, I was good ten feet in the air. I remember I, it was like in slow motion because when I went up, I was thinking I'm gonna armbar counter. I was thinking it, and I thought I had more time than that. And I got up in the air, and it almost threw me off guard. I was like, oh my god! And then I just hit, and I, I mean, it took the piss out of me. I, I was, uh, I was done. And there, there again, I became a fan again. I just went. Wow. I'll tell you what, he, 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 he dropped an elbow on me after that. And it, once again, it's like I, I could see this happening to me, but I couldn't respond to it. And I, I, don't know, I don't know what it was, but somehow I kicked out. I mean, I don't know if it was instinct. Instinct. That's I, didn't see you, instinct. I, did, I didn't see you counting it. Normally, I try to look for the ref. And uh, I, did, I, I don't know. I just heard it, and, and I, I just shot my shoulder up. Yeah, but and, I counted uh, two. And he, he freaked. Right? He freaked out. He freaked out. Uh, he started he started pummeling me again, and that pissed me off, and that's what kind of woke me up, to tell you the truth. Uh, he got me in an arm bar, and being in that kind of pain, that really is honestly what woke me up. And uh, the adrenaline started coursing, and I got to the rope, uh, thankfully, because the arm bar, I mean, I'm lucky I still have an arm. And, uh, and then I crawled to the corner, and I set his ass up. I just waited. Um, he come charging at me. I moved out the way. I hit him with that big suplex, and I thought I had it there. That was. I, I mean, I have never, I have never uh, tried to, you know, pin a guy so damn hard. I mean, I was, I was you know, putting every every ounce of, of energy I had into that pin, yeah. and he got a shoulder up, and it, and it wasn't by much. Uh, and I then I, I kept kicking him. I kept kicking him. I kept kicking him. I hit the ropes and kicked him hard. I mean, right in the temple, uh, dropped him. And, you got him uh, pissed off with what you did. Yeah, and that, that I shouldn't have kicked him in the head. I should have stuck to the guts. Yeah, you and, got uh, him pissed off really I good. got him pissed off. I hit the ropes, and then he Superman punched me in the face. 
that was not cool. Um, he, he, he had a chance to pin me there, but he picked me up and he put me in a choke. And uh, I have to apologize now for I, this. No problem. I understand that. But, I was... uh, you know, I was desperate, so I'm not going to lie. I was up in that choke. I was about to tap. I'm not, you know, I got a family to worry about. I'm not losing that match. And I so got, I kicked Father Time right in the face. I got knocked down, unconscious there for a little I knocked, bit. I kicked him right. I'm just going to say it. I kicked his ass right. Well, I kicked him in the face. So Dingo let him go, and I knew Father Time's down for a little while. I went and got that chair, and I wrapped that chair around his back about three or four times. Uh, dropped it to the mat, hit him with a DDT, and still, still he didn't kick out. Unbelievable. So you still were out of it, weren't quite with it, so I went and I hit him again three more times, and that pissed him off. Yes, it did. I know it hurt him. I could, I could, he cringed. He cringed. I could see the pain in his face, but he got mad, and I hit the ropes with that chair. I was going to run and just massacre him with it. And he punched that chair so damn hard in my face, it split me right across the top. Yes, it did. So here I am pouring blood out. And thankfully you were down because that was enough time for me to get my head together. I got the kick out of that. Well. And then he got the chair. Now this And then is, he this hit me with it in front of you. Now, did now I do he, this on purpose? All of this? Yes. Yes, I did. But here's, I'm going to defend Father Time right now. First of all. Kicking you in the face, you had no way of knowing if that was on purpose. You know, until the until this point, I thought that was an accident. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're probably going to kick my ass later for it. But, yes, I kicked you in the face intentionally. So. I got my lip busted. You busted my lip. Yeah, right well. Sorry. Right. I'll pay the dentist. So. We're training, aren't we? But. There's this old saying in wrestling. If the ref can't see it, it didn't happen. All right. And when I hit him with that chair, you weren't looking. So I didn't put you on the spot. No, I was still out. You didn't know even about the chair until after you, when you saw the footage. And 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 actually, when I came to, all I seen was Dingo with the chair in his hand, and you was unconscious. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were laying there, and you you were busted open, and you were saying. So it was pretty obvious what had happened. That he had hit you. So I can't fault you for throwing that out. And that, you know, I'll be honest with you, that was my plan B. Um,. I'm just gonna tell it like you know. This. I, I, I I'm just gonna tell it like I this. hadn't look. seen the tape. You know, you're telling me things now that look, you know. Look, I'm I'm just gonna tell it like it is. You know, going into that match, I, I knew I was the underdog. I know this is an undefeated super heavyweight. I knew what I was going up against, but I didn't back down, and I took all the punishment he handed out. And as far as I'm concerned, I wrestled a smart match. I did what I needed to do, and I won the match. And that was my contingency plan. I had set him up. I baited him. I I, I knew if I couldn't pin him. And I knew basically after that suplex, after he kicked out of that suplex, I knew I didn't have enough in me. That was a devil. I didn't know. I knew I didn't have enough in me to 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 put him away. And when he didn't, when he kicked out of the chair shots, you know, I, I you know, at that time, you know, after I took the, that Superman and that axe kick, that you know, after I made those mistakes and got hit with those, there was no way. So, you know what? I did what I had to do. But here's what I don't like. You know, he's got to understand the way it works, the rules. You know, he was caught red-handed with a chair, and I'm split open. You know, you the what you, you woke up to a chair shot, basically, okay? So yeah. what makes me mad is, you know, if he, him knocking me out after the match, okay, I can accept that. I deserved it. I flat out deserved for him to come back out and knock me out. But he put his hands on you, and that, that was bullshit. So Yeah, he's blaming me for his loss. So Dingo, uh, at the end of the show, issued a challenge mm -hmm. to Father Time and I. We apparently, and this has already been signed by Pure Pro Wrestling, we're 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 in it. It's a tag team match. Father Time and I have to step into the ring with two super heavyweight MMA fighters, Dingo Brown and Christos the Mad Greek. The Mad Greek. Have you seen this man? I've seen him. I've been watching the videos. Have, if y'all haven't seen him, Google this man. He is a so, man. So, I guess the old uh, term is you reap what you sow. And now we got our backs in the wall. We got well, two super heavyweights and a tag team match. I'm and I feel t- like we're not, you know, I feel like, yeah, we're the underdogs. But I tell you what, you and I will talk later, and we're going to train for the next few months to get ready for this thing in May. Well, I've already started I feel training. like we can beat him. I I've already like started. Him. I've started already because I've seen this man. I've seen Dingo. And I know this is going to take everything and all that we've ever had 
in order to beat these guys. A lot of things have happened, if you can't tell, over the past few weeks since that show, and this spring is going to be huge. Let's talk about the spring. Let's make a transition coming up here. First of all, May 3rd, Pure Pro Wrestling will return to Grand Blank Academy. Grand, here in Grand Blank, Blank Academy. Michigan. Oh, man. This is a building we sell out each and oof, every time. Love it out there. And love the it. best part is the Elite Eight is going to be coming to GBA. We might be under the stars that night. You well, know that? I'll tell you what. It's going to be incredible. The Elite Eight, it's going to happen once again May 3rd. Here's what the Elite Eight is. You take eight of the top PPW mm -hmm. superstars. You put them in a one-night tournament. There is four single first-round matches and yeah. then a four-way elimination finale. The winner, the survivor of the eight-man Elite Eight tournament, becomes the number one contender for a Retro Slam. Retro Slam is sort of like our Super Bowl, our World Series, our NBA Finals, all rolled into one Retro Slam. And it's gonna be, it just isn't going to be a normal Retro Slam. This is Retro Slam 5, the fifth anniversary, five years in the making. And if Sebastian Rose happens to hold on to this belt through the month of May, then come fall, or rather come summer or fall, they, have, they haven't released you know, Retro Slam's times yet, He's going to be stepping in the ring with the winner of the Elite Eight. This mm. is a huge show. This is an absolute huge show. Why is it so huge? Because guess who the first announced competitor in the Elite Eight is going to be? I don't know who will be the first. It's not me. It's, it's not, not you. It's not me. No. I know. It's guess me. who? Who? Former WWE superstar, the only one-legged wrestler in oh, the world. Yes, no. the only no. one-legged no. wrestler no. in the no. world. Zach Gowan. Zach, Zach Gowan, Gowan makes his return to the PPW ring oh, at the Elite goodness. Eight. He is the first announced entrant in the Elite Eight 2013 tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to miss that one. And the next week, you're going to have updates on our website, prowrestlingatitsfinest.com. If you go on there now, you're just going to see more information about the last event we had. We apologize. Hey, it was a crazy event. We took some time off. But... Mm -hmm. Next week or so, we're going to be having updates. We're going to be releasing more information about the Elite Eight, where you can buy tickets, and where, where it is, when, the what, who, why, how, <laughs> everything. May 3rd, Elite Eight. Look for that coming up. Grand Black Academy. GBA. Mm. Now we're going to fast forward to May 11th. Pure Pro Wrestling returns to the Windy, well, not to the Windy City, to the uh, Vehicle City. Vehicle City. Wait, no, is, there, is that Flint? No, we're the Buick City. Uh, anyway, Detroit. we're going to Detroit. Damn it. <laughs> we're going back to Detroit, May 11th, at St. Cecilia Gym. Cecilia Gym, one of the most known gyms mm -hmm. here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been featured in USA Today. Mm -hmm. It's been featured all over the Internet. Uh, a lot of the best ball players in the world have come right out of that gym, St. Cecilia. And we're going to be there live with Pure Pro Wrestling Action. You're going to see several stars making returns to Pure Pro Wrestling. Uh, we, we've got huge matches signed. In fact, uh, Sebastian Rose is going to be defending his Michigan State Championship that night. We'll be announcing the competitors in that huge show in the next coming weeks. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, on May 25th, we will be returning to the Flint Masonic Temple. And there that, my friends, is where you will see this huge tag That's team matchup, right MMA versus professional wrestlers. Father Time and I, Justice Time, will step Justice into the ring. Time with the Mad Greek and Dingo Brown, and anything will go. I mean, I'm telling you what, this is going to be a knockdown, drag out war. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to miss this one. And that May 25th show is going to be huge. We have also a special musical guest, Cash O'Reilly, and the Downright Daddies, a local rockabilly group who is doing huge things here all over the Midwest. And last but not least, you're going to see the return to a pure pro wrestling ring of who, 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 Ring who? of Honor Superstar. Jimmy Jacobs. Jimmy Jacobs. Boy, it's been a long time since he's been And there. it's only fitting, folks, that that Masonic Temple show be called Last Rites. This is going to be Last Rites, ladies and gentlemen. That's the show that Jimmy Jacobs basically brought to Pure Pro Wrestling. Last Rites. This will be our, I believe, our fourth one. Unbelievable, right? Really is. Last Rites 4. Wow. 
Masonic Temple, May 25th. So we've got three huge shows coming up in May. Plus, you're going to get to see Pure Pro Wrestling stars out of town. We've got several bookings where a lot of our talent is uh, heading out to other companies. So they get to showcase their talent and skills elsewhere for other fans that they normally wouldn't see. So there's going to be some exciting times coming up. You're going to be finding information about this at ProWrestlingAtItsFinest.com. And, of course, each and every week we'll be here at Figure 4 Radio here on FlintTalkRadio.com. That's Wednesdays at 4.15. So, folks. Folks, we have a lot of stuff coming up. We've got a television show debuting. We've got uh, new stars debuting. Mm-hmm. We've got former WWE superstars. We've got current Ring of Honor stars. Jimmy Jacobs was just the tag team champion with Steve Carino. This man is on top right now. Yeah. And he's coming I, to it, pure, it, pro pure Pro Wrestling. And guess who he's calling out? Not you. Not me. Oh, him and I already had Sebastian our award. Rhodes. Sebastian Rhodes. He's gunning for the man. Well, that's, it's, yeah, I we'll, guess when we'll you come, you might as well come with gusto. I, 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 indeed he is. So yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing Jimmy Jacobs, Rodriguez the zombie princess, else. coming. Ring of Honor's superstar here on May 25th. Folks, we're running out of time. Uh, next week, we're going to start uh, re-returning <laughs> the uh, the Father Time Rewind. We're going to start talking yeah, about some of our old timers of yes, the past. Yes. We, uh, we It's a segment that... Uh, We've uh, dropped uh, since all the all the the crazy commotion we've had with some of these shows building up. Man, we've had some yeah, guests getting choked out. We've had arm wrestling contests. Yeah, we've had, but uh, I mean, it, we Bud didn't want to come back and do the show for us again, or uh, actually, actually, he came back last week when we canceled. So yeah, that was my bad. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that because you know you said it was yeah. another group that was playing. I thought maybe Bud didn't want. Oh to. well, no, no. He'll be he'll be back at some more. Events, oh, okay. But yeah. We're gonna we're gonna change it up and. Uh, you showed me where he got the stitches taken out recently. So from you know Dingo Dingo's attack. Yeah, so. Dingo, yeah. Dingo yeah. messed him up. Yeah. He's lucky Grizzly Bear didn't get a hold of him. Man, that's uh, you know back in the locker room that was one of the most tense times that I've ever had yeah. in a locker room when Dingo yeah. was walking down back. Yeah, there. a lot of folks don't realize that we have to share the same locker room. So I. Here's a guy that, you know, basically if you would have put us next to each other any time in the past six weeks, we would have just tore everything up, each other up, and the whole room. But we had to share a locker room. So I'm looking at this guy, you know, 10 feet away from me while I'm putting my boots yeah, on. And he's putting just, his uh, boots on. Yeah, I mean, they were, everybody was cordial, but you could tell there was a lot of tension between the wrestlers yeah. and uh, how, does it, how does it feel to, like, uh, fight against a walking wall? I mean, that guy was huge. I mean... You know, it, it it's terrifying. You know, I got to say, that's when uh, instinct takes over, your training, your preparation takes over, um, you know, and, and, and I had strategy going in. I knew what my game plan was. I wanted to, you know, keep him, uh, I knew he'd, like that, he'd be charging at me. I wanted to keep him on, on his toes and get, get his cardio up, get, get him winded and get him pissed off. And, uh, you know, so I had that strategy in mind. It was like it was like instinct took over. I, I didn't think much about it while I was out there. I had the, you know, I had the fear of attack, you know, happening. It's that same type of feeling, you know, if you were to get jumped in the parking lot, you know, you, you're just in survival mode out there with a guy that big, you know. Well, I tell you what, I don't know how I got myself in this, but I tell you what, it's going to be one match between us and Dean. Well, we're going to be doing some training. You're, you're going to, folks, you look at this old man over here and you think, oh, well, that's cool. He can wrestle. You, you he doesn't just wrestle. He dominates you. You have no idea how strong this guy is. He put up 450 pounds just last week on a deadlift and puts it down and said, that was easy. This man, I've watched him move cars. I've watched him pull vehicles. I've watched him, I mean, just do unreal things. I've watched him bend steel, rip phone books, eat fire. He does it all. This man is a freaking that was in a wrestling gesture. machine. <laughs> yeah, jalapenos. But I'm telling you what, folks, you're going to see some interesting segments coming up. We're going to actually make a little documentary. We're going to get ready for this fight. Because I figure, hey, if this is our, 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 our last match, <laughs> if we don't make it through this, at least we at least we're on record a little bit. Some of some of it some of it's going to be remembered. So we're gonna we're gonna be uh, filming our training segments. Uh, you know we're gonna be uh, keeping you updated, letting you know how things are going. You know uh, Father Time's already made a goal to try to put on another ten or fifteen pounds of muscle. Mm-hmm. Uh, believe it or not, I'm 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 looking to uh, do the opposite. I'm gonna I'm gonna get even lighter. I'm gonna dip under the two hundred mark because uh, if I can uh, be two hundred pounds and I can take a kick a kick to the face or a punch to the face and still get up. And uh, have a man that winded. I mean, I'm telling you what, I had Dingo. I was very close to having him. And uh, I made a couple mistakes early in the match that cost me. But, uh, you know, I, I, I know what I'm doing now. I've got that strategy down. And I'm telling you, Father Tom, I feel confident that we can do this. I know you're a little hesitant. Well, you know, I know I, you're a little nervous. Uh, uh, yes, I, I'll admit it, you know, but there's, you know, because I guess the thing that's concerning me, he knows what, he knows what wrestling is now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, hey, maybe he'll follow the rules this time, and we'll actually see who the better man is. Oh, well, we'll see. Won't we? You know, and yeah, I got to ask too. Uh, are are Christos and Mad and uh, you know uh, C B Brown? Are they? Uh, you know, are, are they are they boys? Are they friends? Or I mean, what you know? You know, from what I heard, they're 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 acquaintance. They like. Have they ever each fought other. each other? Or anything uh, like no, that? I don't think they ever fought each other before, huh. though. But uh, that would be interesting. That would be interesting too. We'll have to uh, delve in and see just how close they are, man. Play a little psychological yeah. warfare. Hey, man, you know they do it to us. We got to do it to them. I think he's from around here in Michigan too. Isn't he's he? from Flint. He's right here from Flint. Yeah. yeah so uh, so it's the two the two biggest pro wrestlers in Flint against the two biggest <laughs> MMA fighters in Flint. Ooh. Folks, you, you you're gonna be here. Period. You're gonna come. Yeah, I tell you, if you what, uh, you missed that the, the last one you missed. You don't. You definitely don't want to miss this next one. There were people calling me. What happened? What happened? You know, somebody. I'm oh, sorry, I couldn't make it. If, don't apologize to me. Apologize to yourself. You, you know, know I, 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 I want to thank though. We got a. We have a lot of new fans. Yep. Yeah, we do. We have a lot of crossover fans. Yes, we do. We have some cross dressing fans. Ah! <laughs> now nah, it's no. just our referee. <laughs> But, you know, I want to thank all those that came out that night, uh, the ones, even the MMA fans that yeah. supported us. Yeah, and everyone and was respectful, cordial. It was, it was, really great, it was a great, great atmosphere. It really you was. Know, it, it, they were confused at first, but, you yeah, know. <laughs> well, but, you know, uh, small, small tights and, and, you know, tends to do that to some people. Well, but it is. I'd like to thank all the fans that showed up that night. You were great fans. I couldn't yeah. ask for a better night. Mm-hmm. That three, what was it? The 300. The 300, the yes. The 300. Yep. So that was our, our best draw at the Masonic Temple. We mm-hmm. hope to keep building upon that. So, folks, we're running out of time, so we want to thank you for tuning in today. We're going to be back uh, next week at uh, 4.15 on Wednesday, and uh, we're going to be laying out some uh, some flyers for you. You get to see what the uh, the next uh, event flyers look like. You'll uh, get some more information about who's competing in the Elite Eight, yeah. who's going to be featured on the uh, Detroit St. Cecilia Gym Show, and uh, also the, uh, the the big return of uh, Gowan, uh, you know, Jimmy Jacobs. Zach Gowan, Jimmy uh, So Jacobs. we've got a lot to talk about. Make sure you turn us back in next week. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm Xavier Justice for Father Time. Yeah, like I said, ain't no time like Father Time. We'll see you every side. <laughs>